what I'm supposed to do to sync audio and video, right? This is a squeaky chair. Okay, I uh, think I've got everything I'll need. Uh, no, wait. Am I forgetting something? Is there something I'm missing or uh? Oh, yeah. Ugh. That's better. Oh, hi. It's nice to meet you. My name is Seven, and welcome to my first YouTube video. Nice on! We're going to be doing a lot of different things on this channel, but I hope that by some miracle, I'll be entertaining enough for you guys to want to come along for the ride. This is a personal invitation from me to you to give that little subscribe button underneath the video just, uh, just, uh, just, uh, just, just a little click. Just a little... Just a little tap tap. A little tap, a little tippy tap. Takes five seconds. Or, look, look, look. I, I get it, okay? It's, it's an exercise in trust. You don't even know what my content is going to be like. But it's okay. I'll wait. As you can see from this graph, 0% of my viewers are subscribed. Because I have zero viewers. That's where you all come in. In all seriousness, this is something that I wanted to pursue for a really, really long time. So I'm just going to give you guys everything I've got. I'm honestly just really, really excited. So now, let's talk about the thing that you guys clicked on this video for. Ooh. Right in the nostalgia. Super Mario Galaxy was released in November of 2007 and was an immediate banger of a game. As of 2021, it is the ninth best-selling game on the Wii in a top 10 that includes most of the major titular Wii games. It sits at a cushy 97 on Metacritic, and the reviews, well, the reviews speak for themselves. 12.8 million copies of this game were sold, and everybody who got their hands on it loved it to bits. Why? Well, for that, we're going to have to take a trip back in time. For a long time, it really felt like telling a story in a Mario game was something that wasn't allowed. But I felt, in this case, that the Lumas and Rosalina really needed a story to explain what they were doing out there, and to give the players a deeper understanding of their presence. So, telling her story as a fairy tale, by reading the book to all the Lumas as if they were young children at story time, just seemed like the mood-appropriate way to accomplish this. These are the words of Yoshiaki Koizumi, director and designer of Super Mario Galaxy. And, you know, He's got a point. The Super Mario games up until Galaxy were pretty linear when it came to plot. Bowser steals Princess, Mario beats up Bowser, Mario saves Princess, rinse and repeat. And whether you're a kid or an adult, sometimes something that simple is enough. But in the case of Super Mario Galaxy, we got something truly special. We got Mario and the story of Rosalina and the Lumas. Well, funnily enough, when I was a kid, a lot of this stuff went right over my head, even though I was the target demographic of Koizumi's storytelling. I was undoubtedly sitting there in front of my TV waiting for story time, just like the Lumas were. It's when I re-examined it as a teenager, and then later as an adult, that I realized this game explores some of the deepest emotions of the human experience. And it all happens right here, in Rosalina's storybook. At face value, Rosalina's story is incredibly tragic. It's a story full of longing, uncertainty, melancholy, and loss. It begins with Rosalina as a young girl, meeting and befriending a Luma for the first time. This particular Luma is waiting for his mother to come for him on a comet, so Rosalina says she'll wait with him. When the pair get tired of waiting, they take to the cosmos in their cute little mushroom-shaped spaceship to actively search for Luma's mother. 
The two eventually settle on a comet, using it to continue the search for Luma's space mom. And it's here that we find out that Rosalina, like Luma, also doesn't know where her mother is. She has a dream where she even sees her mother, who tells her that she'll always watch over her, rain or shine, and even from the stars above. Rosalina wakes up weeping, and she and Luma comfort each other in their shared grief. After yet more searching through the endless reaches of outer space, Rosalina consoles a now despondent Luma by telling him that she'll take care of him. And in doing this, she gives herself a spark of purpose as well. And so, the two of them take out the supplies in their comet and build themselves a spacious home, complete with a library, bedroom, kitchen, fountain, and gate. But they both acknowledge that something is missing. That's where the rest of the Lumas come in. Suddenly, Rosalina finds herself the adoptive mother of dozens upon dozens of little star children, and she takes them all into her new home to care for them. After some more time passes, Rosalina and her new children see their 100th comet, and it casts Rosalina's mind back to her home planet, now just the tiniest of specks in the distance. She grabs her father's telescope and brings the planet's landscape into her view eventually landing on a specific hill that is very familiar to her. She reminisces about stargazing with her father, sledding with her brother, and picnicking with her mother, all on that hill. Rosalina breaks down in front of the Lumas, begging to see her mother again, even though all this time, she knew that her mother was sleeping under the tree on the hill. After a little more time, Rosalina became sad again thinking about her mother. Her original companion Luma tried to cheer her up, but after being unable to do so, he decided to become a comet himself so that she and the rest of the Lumas could visit her home again. The Lumas explain to a dumbfounded Rosalina that it's every Luma's destiny to transform into different things. A star, a comet, a planet. Some of them even want to grow up to become a star that makes someone special smile. And so, all the Lumas comforted their grieving mother, who cried no more. And with a glimmer of hope, they set off for Rosalina's home planet. More Lumas continue to be born and grow up, and Rosalina is there to care for and nurture them. She recognizes that the Lumas are her family now, and that she wants to stay with them until they're ready to strike off on their own. Because, in her own words, that's what makes a mother happiest. At the conclusion of the story, we're told that, even now, Rosalina and her children visit her home every 100 years so that she can get a chance to nap in her favorite sleeping nook. Are you guys okay after that? <laughs> I'm not. I mean, I got really emotional simply rewatching Rosalina's storybook game footage. But beyond the fact that the tone of her story is sad, why does this game make us feel so much? Well, like I said before, it's because of the emotions that the game forces us to confront. Super Mario Galaxy plays a lot with the idea of loneliness. Rosalina's story is absolutely full of it. She starts off on her own journey through the stars with no family to speak of, eventually having to make her own. Still, she yearns for home, for the company of the people she knows and loves. The planets and spaces that Mario traverses are incredibly exciting and full of new things for us to explore. 
Even more than that, they almost seem to be eager to show us everything they have to offer. But at the same time, Mario is alone throughout all of this. He's just met Rosaline and the Lumas, and while they are his friends, and they are there to guide him on his journey, nothing about his environment is familiar or comfortable to him. He has a little apricot-colored Luma friend to accompany him, but still, we have to realize that he's exploring the void of outer space. There's an unnerving emptiness in looking out beyond the confines of the observatory, or even when Mario's just shooting through space towards a new planet. The feeling of a vast nothing is present throughout the entire game, and it never lets us forget it. What really allows this story to shine, though, is the fact that it couples this feeling of loneliness with a pervasive sense of warmth. Rosalina's story is topped off with something that is neither happy nor sad, but rather real and human. She's come to terms with her past and fully stepped into the role as the mother of all the Lumas, and her willingness to choose this life is a source of warmth in and of itself, a display of certainty and clarity when all around us is the unknown. The scope of the game's world is unfathomably huge, so all of the small moments and spaces that we experience with Mario are made that much sweeter. From all the little nooks and crannies on the observatory, to the interactions with all the different kinds of Lumas, our conversations with Rosalina and the different denizens of the galaxy, catching star bunnies, exploring planets, fighting off enemies, and finding power stars to save the world. Everything that we do is suffused with this warmth, which softens the cold, hard edge of outer space and gives us something to ground ourselves in. The juxtaposition of emptiness and fulfillment gives the game a wholly bittersweet quality that drew us to it as kids and is what absolutely enchants me as an adult about the entire experience today. To put it really simply, Super Mario Galaxy is a game filled with contrasts, and they all come together to create a contrast within our hearts. Joy imbued with sadness, and as humans who are capable of a full range of complex emotions, I think that a lot, if not the majority of people, are inexplicably drawn to a feeling like this. This is one of the most beautiful things about this game, no matter what angle we approach it from. I think you can all understand what I'm talking about. Guys, I adore this game so much. This video is mostly focused on its story, but at the end of the day, it's meant to be more of a love letter to the game itself. It had an enormous impact on me as a kid and made me fall in love with the art of storytelling. It will always be one of my favorite games of all time. I mean, how could it not be with music like this? Now that I'm an adult who's trying to figure out what I'm going to do and who I'm going to be, it's nice to know that I'll always have Super Mario Galaxy to bring me that nostalgic feeling of childlike wonder. And whether you're an existing fan of this game or not, I think that it can do that for you too. It can remind you that being lonely is okay, that being sad is okay, and that the natural gravity of your life and the lives of those around you will always be able to pull you back down. To earth and there you have it guys my very first video i could talk about this game forever like how rosalina's story is, actually traces the entire narrative of mario's journey from start to finish or how the two stories play off of each other and reinforce the atmosphere and message of the entire game or how listening to rosalina's story is an active choice that you make because it's not even something that you have to do to complete the game 
or even how Rosalina's story wasn't even supposed to be in the game in the first place and it had to be snuck in by the design team. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope that you decide that you want to stick around. I've got a couple of other video game related things that I'm working hard on, so stay tuned. At the very least, I don't mind being background noise during lunch. Enjoy the rest of your day or night, and I'll see you soon. Bye!